with people at matches getting excited. That was Robin Copeland back in December 2019, scoring a late match-winning try for Connacht against Gloucester in the Heineken Champions Cup. I'm delighted to be joined on the line by Robin Copeland. How are you keeping, Robin? Ah, we're not able to get you there at the moment. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, yeah, ah, sorry. There you are, there you are. Classic we unmute. Unmute, come on, rookie error. We're a year into this thing now. You should know. You should know. I was just saying that 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 was one of the good days. I would imagine at the sports ground, uh, that late late try against Gloucester. That was sort of your trademark oh, yeah. move, wasn't it? Yeah, geez. <laughs> when I started to play, and then I was like, oh my god, that's a throwback. Fans, crowd, last minute wins. Geez, I haven't had any of that for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully it'll be back very, very soon. Uh, you're joining us uh, for the launch of the Big Rugby Run 2021. It'll take place virtually on May 22nd with funds raised going towards initiatives run by Tackle Your Feelings, a mental health and well-being programme. The programme is run by Rugby Players Ireland and Zurich Ireland with the support of the Zurich Foundation. You can register a team for this year's event now by visiting the Big Rugby Run Dot com. Uh, you're joining us from France. You're playing your club rugby in France at the, mo at the moment. Hopefully I pronounce it right, Robin. Correct me if I'm wrong. With Soyo Angoulême. Yeah, that's a lot better than I uh, <laughs> attempted the first time around anyway. Yeah. So you've been there on. since last summer. Was this a simple case of needs must? There was no contract and offer in Ireland and uh, you wanted to keep yeah, playing? Basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. There was... I was told the Connacht look there's nothing there for you and I said yeah that's absolutely fine you know understandable um, and yeah look I my agent explored all options um, and an old coach that I had back in in Rotherham years ago was was coaching here at the time and uh, he got in touch with my agent and yeah look the, the move happened pretty quick I'd say I had nothing and then had signed within nearly 48 hours so um yeah, it all happened pretty quick, trying to get the logistics sorted out with you know, my girlfriend and family and trying to figure what was the best move. But uh, yeah, look, delighted, delighted we came over and we're, we're trying to make the most of it anyway. Making it in Irish rugby is often seen as playing with the four provinces, of being a regular, of getting contracts. And you had spells at Munster and at Connacht. But I guess having started your career in England and having a couple of spells with Plymouth and with Rotherham, you always knew there was life outside of Ireland. Yeah, and uh, like, do you know, I, I, I'd urge any young player to not judge his success of his career by you know, those four provinces, there's so much more out there. You can go and travel and see the world and, and li literally have that, have a career in rugby. It's not not just the pride of playing for your province, you know, there's there's a career there and um, there's a lot of options. And I think more and more guys uh, are exploring those options, whether it be America, Japan, France, um, you know, you know, there's been players, Irish players playing in, in every league now, basically around the world. And, um, those, those doors are definitely definitely open. And I guess they're going to have to because you look at what is coming through in Irish rugby, it has been such a success story in many ways, particularly at Leinster where it will just be the very cream of the crop who get to play for Leinster. The next step down are going to probably end up transferring to Connacht or Ulster and then there's going to be a huge crop of players who you don't want to lose, who actually yeah. may not be in that position at 21-22, who actually... A, good trip of playing senior men's rugby in England or in France could do them the world of good. It could it be exactly what they need rather than sitting waiting for opportunities off the bench in the Pro 14. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for for me, like, you know, going over to the UK and playing in the championship, that, that absolutely made me as a player having the opportunity to play 80 minutes week in, week out, uh, you know, work on work on my strengths and my weaknesses and you know that absolutely stood to me, and I wouldn't be I've had wouldn't have had the career I had today. You know, if it wasn't for that opportunity to go over there and do that. So, you know, for young guys who see you know six, seven players in the in the line ahead of them, to be able to go overseas and play in you know one of the leagues there, you think Ireland has four teams, the UK has twenty four, France has like. 16 in the top league there's or 14 in the top league 16 in the pro d2 and then even federal one is a professional league so the opportunities to come over and and explore our parts of the world is 
is uh, is is breathtaking, really, when you think about it. Has the attitude towards those moves changed a lot since, say, a decade ago when when you went to England? Is there now more an acceptance, even from agents, pushing players towards, you know what, open your eyes here, go take that opportunity? Yeah, I think not even from agents. I think players themselves are being like, oh, I'd love to get over to France or I'd love to go and do, you know, that that drive is coming from the players themselves. Um, you know, the, the money in France, at the top level anyway, is, is you know, exceptional and players can really make a, a, an absolute fortune there if they want. Um, and you see a lot of top top guys going over, even just for two, three seasons and, and coming back and being able to, you know, have no mortgage and no worries. And, you know, that that's a that's a big draw for guys, um, as well as the sunshine and the weather and the whatever else, the different cultures and, you know, experiences that you have. But, yeah, it's 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 a big draw. You obviously have had a, a very successful career as well. You, you play for Ireland, so you got right to the very top. You talk about the sort of pride of place angle there, and even though you came through at Leinster, you know you ended up playing at Munster, and there's probably nowhere where that sort of pride of place is more to the fore of what the ethos of the team is meant to be about. Is that a difficult thing to live up to as a player coming into? Because every player who comes into Munster is being judged on the greats that have gone in the past and that sort of raw energy of that era of O'Connell and O'Gara and even of uh, the players that came before them that, that it's not just about turning up and doing your job you need to have a, a little bit of some magical Munster feeling about you as well Yeah, like it, it can be tough and the, and the expectation is there like without a doubt um, and like that's also player driven you know um, and it's, it's 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 something that is very special in in places like uh, like Munster. Um, so yeah, it, it does play a factor, and, and maybe that's that added pressure. But I don't think there's any rugby player in any club anywhere that's not doing their absolute best, or have they have done that pride in what they're doing, or uh, you know want to do what's best for the team. So you know we, we all find our own motivation for things um, and our reason for being there, and you know. Monsters may be the pride and and the history and everything else, but I think there's there's lots of other clubs and lots of other places that have plenty of history yeah. and, and pride as well. So, um, yeah, look, it's it, without doubt, Monster is a special place, uh, and I absolutely loved my time there, and I've had some some best moments of my career are, are in a Monster jersey, and um, yeah, look, I'm I'm very uh, very thankful and proud of those times. Was it one of those cold November nights that was the match against the Maori All Blacks where you probably had one of your best your best nights in a Munster jersey? Yeah, like, for so many reasons, not just because we won, you know, it was just, it was a, spe- it was a group of guys who kind of, the internationals were away, the, uh, everyone wanted to play in that game, we had nothing to lose, it was just a one-off game, we could go out and enjoy ourselves, to, you know, face, to face the hacker for a lot of guys, it's their including myself first and on, only time um you know it was just it was just an unbelievably special day and it's it's a day i'm i'm proud of uh not just how i played but to just be involved in and to play a part of uh was was unbelievable how did you find that dynamic of the international players and sometimes you were one of them but of the international players particularly at munster going away for long periods into Ireland camp and you're there slogging away on those tough winter nights in the Pro 14 and then they rock back in for the Champions Cup and understandably are going straight back into the team. Is it just a case you know what you're signing up for and you got to accept for it and you're trying to use those games, weeks and months to put yourself in a position that you get to start those matches as well or is there is it a somewhat disjointed setup when you've almost got two different squads? No, it's not. It's not disjointed. You know, you know where you stand. Um, you know, you you'd hope that coaches would give you that honesty. And um, yeah, I think every player kind of knows their worth and knows their weaknesses and strengths. And you know, you, you try and work on your weaknesses as much as possible. Uh, you try and use your strengths uh, as often as you can. Um, and you, you know, when you're given those opportunities to to make the most of them. Um, and at the end of the day, I've, for me anyway, it was always a team sport and 
doing what was best for the team um felt like you know i was doing my job if i was doing that so if the if the guys coming in started ahead of me do you know what and that best for the team i was happy enough with that i would still do my job during the week of pre- preparing them as best as possible and um you know if i if i did get the nod that i was prepared and ready to go and i think as as a player that's that's all you can really do is be as prepared uh, as possible to to add as much value as you can when you get the chance did you get a, much of a sense of what johan gran was about in the few months you were there uh, yeah, yeah, I, I actually have a very good relationship with him. I've, um, he's he's a very honest man. He's pretty open. He kind of wears his heart in his sleeve, and um, you know, there's 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 no hidden layer to him. That's uh, I didn't never felt like he was lying to me or trying to butter me up in any way. He was very open and honest, and I always appreciate that. And I was op- open and honest with him, and um. Yeah, I think he's he's formed good relationships with players down there, and I think, especially with younger guys coming through, he's he's given them opportunities and he's backed them, and I think it's really paying off. The uh, Pro D two where you're playing now has a bit of a reputation, uh, to put it mildly, as being uh, one of the toughest, one of the most physical, and uh, yeah, physical is putting it politely, I think, leagues in the yeah. world. Uh, has it lived up to the hype? Um, yes, yes, and no, like it's 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 just silly things like players will get into a scuffle and then everyone will dive in whereas like you know i i i never will unless i'm involved directly which has happened a few times uh but like you know it's just it's easier for me to just save my energy i'm like okay you can fight and pull all you want and be tired in five seconds and i'll, I'll have my extra seconds rest that's always how i kind of thought of it um but like you ha- I have seen some just like hot-headed, stupid stuff that any sane individual wouldn't really do on a rugby pitch. But um, go on, what sort of stuff? <laughs> yeah, like oh, like like one of our props headbutted a guy coming up out of a scrum when like sixty seconds into a game, and you're just like, what are you doing? Like you know, you're you're sixty seconds into a game, you've now got a red card, and we have to play for fourteen men for whole game and another opposition prop got up from a scrum the ref ping ping the penalty and the guy just spat at him and you know right. straight red card obviously and you're just like, like that's that's toggery like it's just stupid stuff and it's things like that that you just like that would never happen even at AIL level that wouldn't happen you know players just have too much respect for the referees and you know, they, they they know that they're just letting the team down if they do something stupid like that. So I guess here there's a bit more French passion, if you will. <laughs> well, if you will, yeah, because I guess we've learned more and more about the French game over the last few years because so many Irish players have gone across and the difference in the culture. But if your teammates getting sent off after a minute and firstly, like there's the potential effect on the result, there's the effect on the 14 players who are suddenly physically going to have to take on uh, what 15 players should be doing. Like when you get into the dressing room, is this guy not being taken aside and said like, this is not what we are about as a club. Is the coach not holding him over the coals? Like, is there fines? Or is it just a, well, listen, that's what happens here. No, like the player, like the player that happened to obviously, felt very bad afterwards and he didn't say anything he was you know sitting in the corner with his hood up you know feeling sorry for himself but like it's got kind of a bit too late for that now and and then you know that same player is the next week kind of half getting in scraps again in trainings or whatever and you're like you've clearly learned nothing you know like it's it's just some people are that's the way they are and there's no real talking to him and I think very much the the French mentality of coaching as well is just kind of let players be themselves and you try not to restrict them too much. And um, sometimes it pays off and you get amazing moments of talent and sometimes it backfires and they do stupid things. So you take the good with the bad. Uh, and those kind of players, are they of the talent where you're looking, if your mentality was better, actually, you could go a lot further in this game. Is that what's been holding them back? Yeah, I think probably historically it, it kind of has. Um, now, holding them back is is a dangerous word because I feel like 
they've still been very successful in France. Mm. You know, a lot of teams and they've done very well. And at the moment, I feel like the teams in France are just a bit more, a bit more cute, a bit more smart in how they're playing. They don't make as many mistakes. They're a bit better drilled. Um, and they have the money to afford the best players in the world. Um, so when you kind of combine all that together, you get a pretty, a pretty dangerous, uh, pretty dangerous mix up. So I feel like this year more than maybe the last 10 years, the French teams have possibly leapfrogged Leinster in a, in a, um, in what they're capable of. Uh, and I, I really feel like the game on Sunday, uh, you know, against La Rochelle and, and Leinster is, is a, is a big one. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see to see Leinster take a fall there. Um, right, because the feeling over here, and uh, even though there's a big interest in La Rochelle because of Ronan O'Gara's involvement, but the feeling is that as well as La Rochelle have done, Leinster are strong favourites for this. Yeah, and like I and I can understand that, and I could very easily be proved wrong. I'm by no means the the best expert, but just the feeling I have and watching a few teams and. Um, you know, the likes of Toulouse, who are just so unbelievably strong. Um, you know, I just, I feel like Leinster, Leinster, although they are unbelievably clinical and they don't make mistakes and they have some quality players from 1 to 23, um, I just think those big French teams now are just starting to have that little bit of an edge about them and that little bit of, um, bit of something that, can really make them dangerous uh, to people, to teams like Leinster, you know. It is a big old La Rochelle pack as well when you look at the likes of Will Skelton in there. Is the game plan for Leinster keep the ball in play as much as they possibly can and hope that La Rochelle tire? Or have you seen as well an improvement in the longevity in terms of fitness from these teams as well? Oh, I, d I don't think, I don't think any of those top teams now are, are slower on dynamic and keeping the ball in play is going to make any difference i think like the likes of will skelton he's an unbelievable athlete as well as being a huge man um and he'll he'll go all day i've seen like some of the things he's done this year and how dynamic and explosive he is is is, is pretty incredible so i think leinster will have to be very smart they'll have to be uh very disciplined not make many mistakes and i feel they'll try and they'll try and use those strengths you know they're once they get into the 22 they'll just go through the phases through the phases through the phases and hope that cracks will appear and they have some great players that can exploit those those cracks when they do start to appear so i don't think the lesser game plan will change a huge amount um i think they will they will have their starter plays to try and exploit little things that they've seen um but just you know the the classic leinster just grind them down um, and pounce on any mistakes that the opposition make. I think that's the the kind of the way they'll go. O'Gara's reputation is sky high in this part of the world, and uh, it's only a matter of time it feels before he makes his return home. Uh, what's his reputation like in France, and how's it grown over the last year? Yeah, I think similar. He's you know got a pretty big cultural following back home, and a lot of people really. Uh, really want him to come back home, but there's a lot of people in France don't want him to go as well. And um, he's got a great thing going here. I think he really enjoys France and uh, whether the pull to come home is is that strong, I, I, I don't know, but uh, he's definitely got a great thing going here. And, you know, I, I, I can't see him really changing too much until he's probably achieved that little bit more here. I feel like he wants to get some silverware um, before he goes home. But uh, time will tell. <laughs> yeah, and he has that new three-year deal as well, so it won't be any time soon, it seems. Uh, we do have uh, La Rochelle Leinster live here and off the ball on Sunday. Three o'clock kickoff. Uh, Neil Tracy and Bernard Jackman will talk us through that one. Uh, our rugby coverage brought to you with thanks to Vodafone, team of us, everyone in. Uh, just then, from your own point of view, for the rest of this season with Swayu Angolem, you're eight points from safety with a couple of games to play, uh, so you need... Uh, a bit of a miracle at this stage. Uh, does relegation change your future? Uh, for the moment, no. Um, it, it's, I, 
feel like I'll stay, uh, regardless of if we get, go down or not. But look, we have a few games left, and we'll we'll hope for a miracle, and um, we'll keep fighting till the end. And that's that's kind of all we can do. But if we go down, then you know, contract contract wise, it's it's not going to change too much. So uh, you know, I'm really happy here. And my fiance is happy here. We've got a nice thing going, and um, you know, enjoy the city, enjoy the club, and made some good friends here. And uh, for the moment, there's there's no real draw to go back home. So we're gonna sit and enjoy the sun for another year. I think. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a nice enough life. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's I can't not, complain. Couldn't be any better than Galway. So look. Hey. Exactly. You don't don't make the comparison on air, uh, Robin. Listen, very best of luck. Uh, hopefully, you get that miracle over the next few weeks and uh, enjoy whatever time you have left in France over the next couple of years as well. And hopefully, we check in with, with you again soon. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Robin Copeland. There.